particularly in our country. When you see large confluent granulomas as opposed to ill-defined uh, small granulomas, uh, you certainly have to keep TB in mind. And that's something that I think in India we need to always be conscious of. Even without caseation. Even without caseation. Even without, because it's, it's just a little factor way. You'll keep your mind open about TB. No, you won't say just because, you know, everybody else had Crohn's that she has Crohn's. What about surgery? What about the lyric trial? Um, one thing being the odd man out, being a <laughs> surgeon in a uh, medical forum is quite difficult. But again, majority of the patients who are generally treated by the physicians first and the combined decision and the counseling regarding surgery starts there. It doesn't start from the surgical side. Yes, we do have the Lyric trial in 2017, which showed an early laparoscopic uh, ileocecal resection versus infliximab. They had comparable outcome. That was especially if actually seen with the physical uh, parameters, they had better outcomes with the laparoscopic ileocecal resection and infliximab. But yes, they, when they are comparable, we can give the option, but I'm not sure how practical it will be, given the status of flow the patient has. So for those of you who are not familiar with the Lyric trial, as Dr. Gautam was saying, this is limited ileocecal resection, and they compared it with, uh, uh, and this is non-obstructive disease, non-perforating disease. Non-emergent, non But I think one imaging you should give us, either give us an MR and No, 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 I, I just, I, 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 okay, <laughs> forgive me for this, but we are gonna go down the track. <laughs> Can I just make small so comments? It's, it's not stopping here, the, the, the story will evolve a bit. Uh, so, so every panel, there are three or four gastroenterologists and one surgeon. So I've been thinking why this is so. Then probably I realized that it has to do with the income parity. So three gastroenterologists <laughs> in case for to one surgeon. So that is my explanation. If somebody has other explanation, please. Uh, I'm sure that will find a lot of resonance in this room. <laughs> <laughs> we have another very senior surgeon here, Dr. Ahmed Ali, so. Uh, but that, so I, I'm glad to see that uh, Gautam is uh, not, a, not, a, not too gung-ho about uh, going to operate on this lady. And th that's very reassuring. So what happened was that this patient actually refused biologics. We suggested biologics and let me explain to you why we would why would he, we would even think of that because this is a relatively young lady she had her life ahead of her in, in terms of going to get married having children so if she could be spared steroid side effects you know not be disfigured by the steroids etc there certainly is value in considering biologics if her uh, social circumstances would allow that. But, uh, you know, her social circumstances didn't, and she decided not to go with biologics. So she was treated as usual with corticosteroids, with misalamine and azathioprine. <coughs> I saw her again in 2018. She continued to have endoscopic lesions. The reason she came in 2018 was that she had acquired a boyfriend and she was going to get married. And... Uh, she wanted to know what's happening with the disease. So she continued to have endoscopic lesions. Bios biopsies showed confluent large granulomas still. So at that point of time, we took her off. I mean, she was off steroids. She was off misalignment. She was only on azathioprine. And, you know, already she had kind of made, made up her mind that she was going to stop all medication. She went back. Uh, in the latter half of 2018, she stopped medicines. She got married, she had a baby, which was delivered by normal vaginal delivery in 2020. So she was kind of lost to follow up for a couple of years. In 2021, she came back because she had pain in the lower abdomen and she had lost a considerable amount of weight. As you can see, she had a microcytic anemia with a hemoglobin of 6.5, platelets were high, ESR was high, iron deficient, and album, but albumin was normal. Colonoscopy again showed ulcers and a structure in the terminal ileum with destruction of the ileocecal valve. Uh, maybe I'll just pause for a minute here because 
Destruction of the ileocecal valve is something that traditionally we have taken as an endoscopic sign of tuberculosis rather than Crohn's disease. Uh, but here, we'll, we'll see how this story evolves here. The biopsy showed extensive ulceration and necrotizing granulomatous inflammation. I think, uh, did you ask for caseating granulomas? They didn't say caseating granulomas, but they described it as necrotizing granulomatous inflammation. So while waiting for the TB uh, results, we started on four drug antituberculous treatment because she came, she had her things, she wanted to go back. And uh, she was given parental iron because she is usually iron deficient. So may I ask uh, for comments from the, from the panel? So here there was strong doubt. So uh, a two months of anti-TB treatment followed by a repeat colonoscopy would be what I would do. I think in India we it's good, but then little more details about the rest of the small bowel. If we know, it will be always better. So suppose you see nodes or you have a thickening or mesentery thickening or you have features of this. But I think uh, starting anti-TB when you're in doubt, especially in India, start and then recheck and then continue is ex accepted. But I think uh, small bowel studies have to be completed because this is picture. So the length of this picture, what is it, is the jejunum involved, everything has to be completed. The upper GI also has to be done before. So she, I, I, I don't think at this point I have notes on an upper GI, so I didn't put that in here. So I don't know if it was done. I don't remember if it was done. No, I agree. I, th I think small bowel imaging, probably MR or CT in someone this age would be important both in making your decision initially whether to do azathioprine or biologic. I, I would use an MR there in someone with extensive small bowel disease. I would probably go towards biologic. If they had you know, maybe a few inches of, of mild ileal disease, I would be fine with starting azathioprine initially. So I would want to see sort of how the MR is here. So this, again, kind of highlights uh, some of the social circumstances with our patients. They come, they have a budget, uh, they have a limited set of investigations done, and then they go back. So this is something that we have to live with. Uh, I'm sure you have different circumstances where you do the same. You talked about the elderly where you compromise on a number of the steps that you would normally take. And so that happens here as well. So. Gautam, I think you wanted to say something. Yes, um, I think th when we started the second part of the story where the patient started refusing biologics and uh, was not adherent to the treatment plan, I think that is the time again surgery could have been counseled about because it's, uh, again it is not an, it's a medical disease. Still the the lyric trial wasn't published at that time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably, sir. I know it's, the patients, again, with a limited budget, every time they come in, they are not prepared for anything mentally for surgery. And then we still, even after surgery, you might need medicines. Yes, it is a difficult part of counseling, but I think with a patient who had a possibility of non-compliance, we could have given that option. Yes, sir, I would like to, uh, uh, Dr. Ward, Ashwin was telling, so you said that if it's a very short stricture, you will go for uh, AZA, and if it's a very long stricture, you will go for infliximab, I mean, uh, biologicals. So can you highlight it, sir? Because clinically, patient is relatively stable, but uh, imaging shows short structures here and there on MRE. That is one group. The other one is uh, a long structure. D do you vary your, uh, I mean, you will not go for biologicals, sir? No, so this was more for the first part when we were deciding whether to do top-down or step-up treatment. Yeah, that's what I'm asking. Deciding. Yeah. So if someone, to me, if someone had bad perianal disease, if they had deep ulcers on colonoscopy or a long segment of involvement where worst case scenario, if the drug doesn't work, they're going to end up losing a large segment of their small bowel. If they had like matted loops of bowel where if you take them for a section, a lot of healthy bowel is going to be sort of injured and potentially lost. Those are the people where I would absolutely start with the drug which has the highest efficacy. So them I would start upfront on combination biologics. In someone who doesn't have any of those features, 
then I would give them all these options. You could either do biologics, you could do budesonide and azathioprine, and we'll assess at six months, or you know, whichever of the biologics you want. So that would be the stratification to start.